My stock portfolio is currently up nearly 100% for the year, and it has increased by nearly $30,000 in just the last month. In this video, I'm going to reveal my now nearly $190,000 stock portfolio and show you what I invested in to achieve those gains. Hey everyone, and welcome to FinTech. In this video, I'm going to walk through exactly which stocks I am holding in my different stock accounts, show you how much money is in each position, and talk about why I picked each stock to invest in. At the end of this video, I will also talk about what trades I am making in the companies that I hold, including one large sale of over $11,000 in one of my largest positions this month. And for full transparency, the portfolio I will show you today does not represent my entire investment portfolio. It's only the individual stock positions. I actually hold a separate investment in my company's 401k, which I invest into an index fund. So hit the like button if you appreciate me showing you these pretty personal details. I do it because I want to be transparent and I think that some people can benefit from it. But let's not waste too much time on intro and let's pull up my brokerage account and start going through my individual stocks. So I have my Charles Schwab portfolio pulled up here. So I'm going to put that on the screen now. You can see here that just over the last year to date, my portfolio has had quite a few ups and downs. At its peak, it's been as high as 168,000 before dropping all the way down to 134,000, rising back to as high as 162,000 before dropping within the same month down to 133,000, and then since then rising all the way to over $190,000. If we expand this to the two year view, it's even more dramatic. And you can see that two years ago, my portfolio was sitting at around $40,000, while as now it's almost at $200,000, which would be a five times increase from then. Now what you're seeing here, even though it's being shown in Charles Schwab, is actually a combination of both my taxable accounts and my non-taxable Roth IRA account. I use Charles Schwab because it actually combines the different accounts between Vanguard and Charles Schwab so I can view it all in one place. I'll talk more about the advantages to using a Roth IRA later in the video, but right now let's just dive into the individual stock positions that I hold. So the first position we're going to look at is CrowdStrike, which I currently own 210 shares of at a market value of around $55,000. This is off of a base of just under $12,000, which means that I've actually gained $43,000 just from CrowdStrike. If you do the math, that's around a four times increase from the amount of money that I originally put into it. So this is actually my best performing stock this year. Now I've owned CrowdStrike for around a year at this point. I originally bought them because I thought they had the potential to completely disrupt the current security landscape. You see, CrowdStrike is a cloud native security company and they offer, in my opinion, the best security product in the world. In fact, recently there was a company called SolarWinds that was hacked and that hack resulted in one of the largest breaches in cybersecurity history. And guess which company SolarWinds turned to after they were breached? CrowdStrike. CrowdStrike is growing incredibly quickly. It has a huge runway ahead, and it's just a really good company from every perspective you look at it. They have good products, they have good leadership, and the numbers behind the company look really good as well. So this is my largest stock position. The next position we're going to look at is Cloudflare. Cloudflare is my next largest position, and if you've seen my channel before, it's probably the company that I've talked about the most on this channel recently. Right now I have 393 shares of Cloudflare worth approximately $42,000 in total, and that's off a base of just under $22,000. So this in total has been about a 100% return on my investment. Again, I've owned this stock for roughly around one year, and I originally invested in Cloudflare both because of how their numbers look and because of their future potential. Cloudflare's goal is to make the internet better, and they're clearly doing that because they're growing their revenue around 50% per year. Cloudflare offers DDoS protection, they offer firewall management, they offer the ability to improve website performance. Basically anything that makes the internet more secure by making it harder for bad actors to use it, or anything that makes it easier for good actors to use the internet, Cloudflare is pretty much involved in it. This company has been one of the most consistent performers in my entire stock portfolio, and even though it's only up 100% compared to CrowdStrike's 400% increase, this is a stock that I have a lot of confidence in going forward. The next stock on my list is Datadog, which I own 383 shares of, worth $41,000 in total. This is about the same size as my Cloudflare position, off of a slightly larger initial investment of close to $23,000. So while not quite a 100% return on investment, it's probably sitting around an 80 to 90% return on investment so far. I've owned this company about as long as I've owned Cloudflare, so roughly a year. And what this company does is try to integrate monitoring for security applications and infrastructure all behind a single pane of glass. Once a business is able to view all this different data from the technology that actually runs their operations, they're able to make much more informed decisions about what they wanna do next with the company. 
This unlocks huge value for companies, and so companies like to use Datadog because it makes them even more money. While Datadog isn't growing quite as quickly as some of the other companies on this list, like CrowdStrike or Snowflake, it is a really solid company. And as we see data continue to be created at a faster and faster rate by things like IoT devices, better tracking of customer technologies, and companies operating in the cloud, which just lets you track data more easily, I think that Datadog has, at the macro level, a lot of potential to continue expanding. Next up, we have DocuSign. DocuSign might actually be a company that you've heard of outside of stock investing because they essentially let you sign any kind of document electronically. I own 53 shares of DocuSign worth about $15,000, so there's clearly a big drop off between my three largest positions and this one. And I originally invested $12,500 into this position, so it's made around $2,000 off of my original investment. I'm pretty happy with this size investment for now because while DocuSign is performing well, while it's growing well, and while it's pretty Pretty clearly the dominant e-signature products out there. They saw a lot of growth in 2021 with a lot of companies having to move their operations online and not being able to sign documents in person. My only worry with this company is that DocuSign might become too dominant for its own good to the point where they saturate their total addressable market and they have to introduce new products to continue to grow. While they do have a product roadmap and I've made a whole video talking about that in more detail, I'm not as confident in their new products as I am with their existing business. So this is gonna stay as a mid-sized position for me. My next position is one of my newer positions, Snowflake. I currently own 54 shares in Snowflake for a value of $13,700 off of an initial investment of $15,000. So this is actually my first negative investment that I have in my portfolio. Part of the reason for that is because it's a relatively newer investment, so it hasn't really had time to grow. And the other part of that comes from Snowflake's valuation. You see, while a lot of companies out there might have price to sales ratios, which is the price of their stock divided by the amount of revenue they have, somewhere between 20 and 40, Snowflake's price to sales ratio is over 100. Snowflake is by far the most richly valued company in my portfolio. But the reason for that is they are growing incredibly quickly at well over 100% per year. Snowflake offers a product that lets companies have an order of magnitude improvement in their data analytics. While back in the day, people had to track their data in spreadsheets and eventually that moved over to computers and then from there it moved over into the cloud, Snowflake is the next step in that transition where it's a managed application in the cloud so that it can scale basically infinitely and companies can just pay for it as a product rather than having to run everything by themselves and hire cloud data engineers to do it. Even though Snowflake is valued really highly because they're growing so quickly and there's no real reason for them to slow down because they've only captured a very small percentage of their total addressable market, this is a mid-sized confidence position for me. This is one of those companies where every single earnings report that comes out, I need to read it in detail because any kind of small change in the company's performance could signal a chance for them to explode in price or for the price to drop dramatically. So this is a risky position, but it's one that I'm happy to hold. My next position is Okta, which I hold 18 shares of at a value of around four and a half thousand dollars off of an initial investment of $3,600. So off of that initial investment, I've made about $800. Now Okta I've owned for over a year, and so these numbers aren't completely accurate because I've sold off some of my initial larger position. What Okta does is enable single sign-on for organizations. So rather than a company needing to have people sign on to each of the individual apps in their organization, they can run everything through Okta and people can just sign on once, saving them time. They also have the advantage that if they need to interface with another company, Okta can help smooth that transition as well. The reason I invested in Okta is because they were growing incredibly quickly, though that growth has slowed to around 30% more recently. So I've decreased this position to one of my smaller positions at this point. I'm probably going to readjust some of these positions later because at this point, at a $4.4,000 position, it's 10% of one of my larger positions, which probably doesn't make too much sense. So stay tuned for next month when I'll probably have some more updates for this. My next position is I think my newest overall position and that is Upstart. I own 35 shares in Upstart at a value of $4,000 off an initial investment of $5,000. So this is my other investment that is overall lost money. Upstart is an AI financing company. Right now they mostly focus on personal loans, but they're also moving into automobile financing. And from there they may later move into mortgages or student loans as well. What a traditional bank does when deciding whether or not to give you a loan is look at your credit score. If your score is high enough, they give you the loan. If it's low enough, they don't. What Upstart does is take this single number and replace it with an AI algorithm that uses over 1,600 
different parameters to try to determine who is a good match for a loan, and they've been incredibly successful. Upstart is able to offer loans that actually default at a lower rate than traditional loans, while also offering them to more people who wouldn't even qualify for a traditional loan. This is such an obvious idea, but nobody's implementing it quite as well as Upstart. So Upstart benefits consumers because more people are able to get loans, and they benefit financing companies because they reduce risk overall. Now this company is down a little bit, mostly because it's a newer acquisition, but I have a lot of confidence in them going forward. And once I'm more familiar with them, probably after a few more earning cycles, I may invest more money into this company. Next up, we have C Limited, which I own 11 shares of at a valuation of $3,000, off of an initial investment of around two and a half thousand dollars. So this has actually increased by about 20% since I've owned it only about two or three months ago. This company was actually a recommendation from one of the people who watches my videos. So thank you for the recommendation. And I did a full video on it, but C in a rough approximation could be called the Amazon of Southeast Asia. They started out as a gaming platform called Garena and they created the worldwide smash hit Garena Free Fire. Since then, they've also expanded into e-commerce with their platform Shopee being being incredibly successful in both Southeast Asia and Brazil. And more recently, they've also expanded into C-Money, offering financing services as well. This company has their hands in a ton of different areas and they've been really successful at landing in one country, expanding to fill the market, and then moving to a new country over time. This company is growing extremely quickly and I have a decently high confidence in them. The only reason that they're a smaller position for me is because they're in the e-commerce market, which is ruthlessly competitive and they're competing with giant companies like Amazon and they don't have the ability to scale in quite the same way that a technology company like Upstart or Snowflake could. So again, this will be a company I will be watching closely and I may buy more of it or sell out at a moment's notice. Now moving on to my next smallest company, we have Zoom Info. It's only a $3,000 position for me off of a $2,700 initial investment. So it's basically flat since I've owned it for around two months. What Zoom Info does is make it easy for salespeople to find information on people in companies. So while a traditional salesperson might have to show up at someone's front door and try to figure out who to talk to to sell an item to, they can use Zoom Info to find that information right away and reach the people who both want to talk to them and they want to talk to. This again is kind of one of those no-brainer products that seems obvious in hindsight, but Zoom Info is obviously doing extremely well because they're growing extremely quickly into their market. I have not yet done a deep dive into Zoom Info and so that's why it's still a very small position for me. And then rounding that out comes my last position, Alteryx, which I own 35 shares of at a valuation of $2,700 with an initial investment of $3,000. So I've actually lost a little bit of money on this company as well. Now Alteryx, I've only owned for about two weeks at this point, but I also used to own the company around a year ago. What Alteryx does is make it easy for non-data scientists to perform data analytics, and it's used by large companies across the world. I first bought Alteryx back in, I think, 2018 or 2019, when I heard about how PwC stopped servicing Alteryx as an accounting client because they would rather use their software without having a conflict of interest. So PwC was not only willing to pay for Alteryx as software, they were also willing to lose them as a customer just so that they could use that piece of technology which showed how good their product really was. And up until 2020, Alteryx was growing incredibly quickly and incredibly steadily and slowly gaining market share. However, once the lockdown started, Alteryx said that they were going to face some headwinds and their growth slowed dramatically. Now at the time, I talked about how Alteryx's slowing growth could be a little bit exaggerated because of the kind of unique way they do their accounting and how once the headwinds of the lockdown went away, they might see an equivalent swing in their growth the other direction. Now I made a recent video talking about this in more detail, but basically I'm going to put a little bit of money into Alteryx before each of their earnings announcements. And then if the earnings go well, I think they might have a pop. And if they don't go well, my hope is that the stock at worst just trades sideways. So in a way, this is kind of a speculative position for me, which is why I'm keeping it at a relatively small $3,000 valuation. Now you may have noticed on some of these companies here, there's a two next to them. And this is because I own these stocks in both Charles Schwab and Vanguard. So Charles Schwab is just a taxable brokerage account where I invest money into companies. While Vanguard is my Roth IRA account. I put $6,000 into my Roth IRA every year to try to max it out because that money can grow tax-free, which means if I want to trade in and out of positions, I don't have to worry about short-term versus long-term gains, and I have a lot more freedom to move quickly. Because of that, if you're interested in investing in individual stocks, I think that a Roth IRA is a great way to do it, and it's what I do myself. So now to talk about some of the trades that I've made in the past month. 
So I mentioned earlier that I bought Ultrix this month around two weeks ago, and I told you my reason for doing so is just as a short-term hold until they get through their earnings. That was a relatively small trade of only $3,000, but I also made a much larger trade this month where I sold almost $12,000 of one of my largest stock positions, and that position was CrowdStrike. Now, wait a second, you might say, didn't you just say that CrowdStrike is your highest conviction position? Why are you selling $12,000 of it? Well, if you look at this account right here, the market value of CrowdStrike is $54,000, while my next largest position is $40,000. While CrowdStrike is a high conviction position, right now that position is worth almost a third of my entire portfolio, which is a little bit too high for me. So I'm gonna trim back on this position a little bit so I can use that money to invest in some of these mid-level positions that I might also still have conviction in. Now one thing which I thought was interesting, which I didn't notice until I put the sale in, is that that $12,000 that I pulled out of the company is roughly equal to my initial cost basis in the company. So effectively the money that I invested in CrowdStrike a year ago, I just pulled back out of the company with a 400% profit. So from here on out, all the money that's invested in the company is money that I made on the stock. This also just kind of goes to show how important it is to hold on to your winners. If I had decided to pull some money out of this company back when it was up 25% because I thought it could never do that again, I would have missed out on this incredible gain. So I always say, if you're thinking of buying or selling a stock, just ask yourself, do I think this company is going to be worth more in the future than it is today? If the answer is yes, buy more of it. If the answer is no, sell it. So that's my summary for my favorite stocks for the month of August 2021. Let me know if you're investing in any of those companies or if you want to hear more about any of the companies I mentioned. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.